Hello, this is uh, uh, Dr. Jonathan uh, Bentovich. Um, I'm recording an important uh, presentation <clears throat> regarding the empirical validation of uh, God's physics. Um, this is, by the way, a book um, that came out uh, in the U.S. and all over the world, a third edition of God's physics book. There's been um, over uh, 100 uh, peer-reviewed scientific articles that have been uh, published in um, uh, international uh, physics uh, and other scientific journals. I've opened multiple uh, international physics, astronomy, uh, and related conferences <clears throat> with the keynote opening talk, excuse me, about this uh, new scientific paradigm for 21st century, um, 21st century uh, theoretical physics. Um, God's physics uh, theory has been called before the computational unified field theory after Einstein's um, famous quest for a unifying field theory. And uh, we've come now to a historic point, uh, maybe likened to uh, um, uh, the historic point uh, uh, where um, in 1915, Eddington, the famous British astronomer, validated uh, a unique critical prediction of Einstein's uh, general theory of relativity. Um, regarding the double-valued uh, perihelion uh, pathway of Mercury around the Sun. Uh, as we all know, Einstein predicted uh, 1.6 arc as opposed to 0 0.8 that uh, Newton predicted. And once Einstein's uh, unique critical prediction has been validated by Eddington in the 1919 solar eclipse, at that point, the whole scientific community, the whole world, accepted Einstein's general theory of relativity as more valid and as fact as, and in fact as including as a special case uh, Newton's uh, classical mechanics. Um, and we stand at uh, an equivalent historic point because uh, as we know from uh, Thomas Kuhn's uh, famous uh, um, analysis of the structure of scientific uh, revolutions, uh, which has been accepted uh, across the board as, as um, description of how science or how, how scientific, uh, specific scientific discipline evolves. Um, so as uh, Thomas Kuhn is teaching us, um, the manner, the way in which a, um, a science evolves generally and more specifically any given scientific discipline such as physics or theoretical physics is uh, essentially by alternating between phases of what, what he calls standard science and in which uh, the, the given scientific paradigm physics uh, accepts a certain paradigm such as Newtonian mechanics and the whole investigation and the whole uh, research and uh, analysis is based on that standard paradigm, let's say Newton's mechanical uh, classical mechanics. And then uh, Thomas Kuhn tells us um, in his famous analysis of the structure of scientific revolutions that uh, science, or in this case physics, reached sort of a wall. It reaches a limit in which there is disturbing symptoms or alarming signs of the old standard paradigm, i.e. Newtonian mechanics, in the case of um, uh, 19th uh, century uh, physics. And uh, those alarming signs include um, uh, inconsistencies, uh, theoretical inconsistencies in the old paradigm. So we know in the case of uh, uh, Einstein's um, relativity theory, Newtonian mechanics was uh, apparently contradictory or was inconsistent with um, Maxwellian electromagnetic theory. And um, that was one of the things that led Einstein to look for a broader theory, uh, relativity theory than general relativity theory, that can pacify, that can uh, um, uh, unify and resolve those apparent inconsistencies between the two pillars of the old paradigm. So one sign, one alarming sign, is the, the appearance of theoretical inconsistencies within the foundations of the old paradigm. The second alarming sign is the fact that uh, is is when the old uh, paradigm cannot explain a major key phenomena um, within um, uh, physics. In the case of Newtonian mechanics, that uh, had to do with uh, the existence or the hypothetical existence of the ether element. Newtonian mechanics had to have this ether element uh, within it, uh, and the ether, the ether uh, element or substance was assumed to be a very fine substance that is perfusing the whole universe, and yet 
um, Michelson Morley and other very famous experiments tried for a long time to validate the existence of this purely hypothetical ether concept and they couldn't do it. In other words, Michelson Morley experiment and other experiments actually um, uh, indicated that the ether element doesn't seem to exist. They cannot find it. They couldn't find it. Einstein, is, in his great genius, said, well, if we can't find it, we have to cancel it. Uh, science, after all, is a, an empirical and rational endeavor, and we cannot go on and on endlessly with assuming something that cannot be experimentally validated. And um, so the second, second alarming sign is the existence of a major phenomena that the uh, standard paradigm, the old standard paradigm, cannot explain. Uh, in our case, by the way, in uh, uh, 21st century physics, we stand at the, an equivalent point. There is a contradiction or a theoretical inconsistency between general relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Perhaps the most, most glaring example of that is the well-known problem or, or um, a contradiction that exists between general relativity theory's <clears throat> insistence. <clears throat> Excuse me. In general, in, in 21st century physics, um, theoretical physics, there's a, a contradiction between general relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Perhaps the most glaring example of that would be that according to th uh, relativity theory, there is a limit, a speed of light barrier, that uh, we cannot transmit signals or even information across space-time that is at, at a rate that is higher uh, than the speed of light. That, that is the limit for the, uh, any, any signal to pass through space-time, any information to pass through space-time. Um, but in, co in contrast, in contradiction to that, quantum mechanics, well-known and empirically validated <clears throat> quantum entanglement phenomenon, wherein two entangled particles, when they're separated by a distance um, that um, cannot be traversed uh, by the speed of light, still an, uh, a measurement in one entangled particles instantaneously affects the complementary values of the other part entangled particle. So that would mean that it seems to violate relativity's, uh, relativity theory's strict speed of light barrier. So that's an inconsistency, uh, basic inconsistency between quantum mechanics and relativity theory. Um, like the, the problem that we saw with uh, the ether concept, there's also a major phenomena, phenomenon in, uh, in 21st century physics, um, i.e. the um, accelerated expansion of the universe, <clears throat> which cannot be explained by the old uh, um, paradigm of general relativity theory or quantum mechanics. By the way, I called the, the, uh, the old standard paradigm in the case of 20th century physics, which is carrying over now to 21st century and is now actually going, undergoing a paradigmatic shift. Uh, so the old paradigm, I called it the material causal paradigm. And I called it the material causal paradigm simply because the basic assumption underlying both relativity theory and quantum mechanics is that we have uh, that everything can, uh, on the macroscopic relativistic plane uh, level or the microscopic quantum level can be explained merely as, as, as a result of direct or indirect material causal interaction, physical interactions between certain elements. Uh, for example, uh, relativity theory assumes, uh, the Big Bang model, for example, associated with relativity theory, assumes that it was an initial nuclear event, the Big Bang uh, event, nuclear event that then created, caused the creation of suns, galaxies, space, energy, mass, time, etc. Uh, so it's a cause and effect interaction. Uh, the way general relativity theory explains the dynamics of uh, the evolution of the universe uh, is through the uh, interaction between massive objects, certain massive objects, and their curvature of space-time, uh, the fabric of space-time, and then that curved space-time also causes or determines the traveling pathways of those massive and other less massive objects. That's also cause and effect. It's a basic assumption, material causal assumption. In the case of quantum mechanics, it's the same thing. Quantum mechanics essentially tells us that uh, any subatomic phenomena, phenomenon, particle, uh, um, force, effect, etc., can only be de determined uh, and exists really, but only uh, solely based on direct um, physical interactions between uh, a given subatomic probe element and uh, a corresponding subatomic 
assumed targets uh, probability wave function, which is assumed to be to collapse uh, as a result of this direct interaction between the probe element and the uh, target element. <coughs> so um, the old material causal paradigm has a basic assumption stating that everything in the universe can be explained merely based on direct or indirect material causal interactions, physical interactions. Um, so we, we're getting to the second alarming sign of the old uh, standard material causal paradigm of 20th century physics underlying both relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And that second alarming sign has to do with the accelerated expansion of the universe. Um, according to general relativity theory, again, part of this old material causal paradigm, according to the general relativity theory, the accelerated expansion of the universe can be explained by purely hypothetical dark matter um, element um, and to a certain extent dark energy, uh, uh, dark energy but the dark matter, uh, purely hypothetical um, uh, element or substance, is assumed to comprise up to 95% <clears throat> of all the uh, energy, uh, of all the, 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 the uh, matter in the universe, uh, but yet it cannot be detected. Uh, now over 20 years, two full decades of ex intensive experimental attempts to detect this elusive dark matter, dark energy element, have yielded no no direct uh, evidence for the existence of dark matter, dark energy. And um, I've mentioned this in previous presentations and in conferences. Scientific American, for example, came up with uh, came out with two, at least two recent articles. One was called The Last Stand of Dark Matter, Dark Energy. And that essentially is that um, uh, um, the author there states that you know it, we cannot continue forever in this impossible situation that we assume there is dark matter dark energy and it comprises most of the matter in the in the universe and yet it cannot be detected experimentally that has to change um and another article that uh, uh alluded to the fact that we may have galaxies without dark matter at all uh, but it's all hypothetical dark matter in a sense is the same um, uh, situation as we had with Einstein's ether concept. Um, and therefore, I, I, um, uh, I called to cancel dark matter and dark energy as, as a superfluous, as non-existent, much the same way that Einstein canceled the ether concept. Um, so we have these two alarming signs. One is the um, uh, uh, theoretical inconsistency between relativity theory and quantum mechanics. The second is the fact that the old material causal paradigm of relativity theory and quantum mechanics cannot account, cannot explain the accelerated expansion of the universe because their explanation, the general relativity theory's explanation, assuming dark matter, dark energy, specifically dark matter, uh, up to 95% of all the mass in the universe cannot be detected experimentally over 20 years. That's an impossible situation <clears throat> and therefore called to cancel uh, dark matter, dark energy. And I offered an alternative explanation uh, based on this new now empirically validated um, God's physics or computational field theory model. So therefore, I, I, uh, that's why I'm saying that we're standing at a historic point. The third, which is equivalent to Einstein's, uh, uh, the, the validation, Eddington's validation of Einstein's uh, unique prediction and the acceptance back then of relativity theory as the new satisfactory scientific paradigm for 20th century physics, uh, I claim that we stand at an exactly equivalent uh, uh, historic juncture, perhaps even more profound for some reasons that I'll, I'll, I hope I can get into in terms of theoretical ramifications of accepting and empirically validating this new God's physics uh, computational field theory paradigm. Um, and so the third element, third condition, prerequisite for the scientific community to accept God's physics as the new uh, valid scientific paradigm um, in brackets that includes relativity theory and quantum mechanics as special cases. Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> but in order for science and the scientific community, uh, physics scientific community, to accept um, God's physics as a new uh, satisfactory uh, um, uh, scientific paradigm for 21st century physics, which includes uh, relativity theory and quantum mechanics as special cases. We'll get into that, I hope. Um, the, the third critical condition is, the, is to identify, much the same way that Einstein did 
with uh, identifying this prediction, unique critical prediction, relativity theory about the uh, double-valued perihelion pathway um, value of, of Mercury's path around the sun, as opposed to Newtonian mechanics predictions. And so we have to identify at least one or more unique critical predictions of this new God's physics paradigm, which will be different than the predictions, corresponding predictions of the old material causal paradigm of relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And fortunately, I've been blessed to identify at least uh, now two uh, specific unique critical predictions of God's physics, and I've actually been able to show recently that those uh, two critical predictions of God's physics, a uh, new scientific paradigm, are found to be more valid, more accurate than the corresponding predictions of uh, either uh, relativity theory or, qu or quantum mechanics. And so that makes it a very exciting point because I'll get into these two conditions, uh, at least outline them, because the minute that we can identify and actually empirically validate that the critical predictions, unique critical predictions of, of general relativity theory, uh, I'm sorry, of God's physics are more valid than the predictions of relativity theory and uh, quantum mechanics, that's the point in which the whole scientific community and science more generally uh, has to unequivocally accept this new God's physics paradigm as the new valid paradigm for 21st century. Uh, so let me just uh, outline, mention briefly, what are these two predictions that have been validated? I'll call uh, over this, um, uh, in this uh, important presentation, as I've, I'm calling in whenever I open a conference, an international conference, I'm going to call astronomers and cosmologists to carry out a time-sensitive, even more direct validation of God's physics new paradigm. But what I'm going to outline now is that uh, regardless, even at this point in time, there's, there are already two unique critical predictions that have been validated by God's physics uh, um, theory as more valid than the predictions of relativity theory and quantum mechanics. So what are these two uh, basic uh, unique critical predictions that have been identified and have been empirically validated? A um, is um, the um, regarding the accelerated rate of the universe's expansion. As we said, general relativity theory fails to account for that. It assumes dark matter, dark energy, assumes that it comprises 95% of the, the, the matter in the universe, but yet cannot be detected for the past 20 years. Um, the new God's physics paradigm offers an, an alternative, fascinating um, uh, theoretical account or explanation for this accelerated expansion of the universe. And essentially what it's telling us is that, first of all, the major breakthrough that God's physics paradigm is bringing to, the, to science and to uh, physics uh, is the discovery of a singular higher order universal computational principle slash universal computational consciousness principle, UCP acronym, and that UCP is computing at an incredible rate of c squared divided by Planck's constant, which gives us approximately 1.36 and the power of minus 50, many, many trillions of times per second, that this uh, new, um, um, that this new, the UCP computes simultaneously and creates uh, a universal frame of the whole universe, a three-dimensional universal frame of the whole universe, existing simultaneously or being computed and presented simultaneously. And it exists for maybe a trillionth of a trillionth, etc. It's 50 zeros, so it's many, many trillions of times per second. And so it exists for a very, very, very short fraction of a second. Then it dissolves back into the UC UCP, and then the UCP creates another universal frame. And so we understand that the universe is not a static phenomenon. It's being created, dissolved, recreated, and evolved by this UCP at this incredible rate uh, of C squared divided by Planck's constant. And so the alternative explanation that uh, God's physics new paradigm gives us for this accelerated expansion of the universe is a far-reaching um, assumption, and um, it's been validated, and I'm going, I'm going to call again for cosmologists, astronomers, to make even a more specific validation of this same uh, amazing um, uh, assumption of God's physics. And the assumption is that, there, that whenever there exists a collective human consciousness focus, in other words, when we have millions of uh, uh, individual human beings all focusing on this UCP, this universal consciousness principle or computational principle, we this causes, this brings about an increase in the rate of the universe's uh, um, uh, expansion. And I give the, the, the example 
um, of uh, the Jewish Rosh Hashanah New Year, uh, New Year's a two days time interval. And the claim is that um, uh, whenever we, uh, uh, if astronomers would gather up with me, collaborate with me, um, there's been an article now uh, that's uh, calling astronomers, cosmologists, to te test this prediction. But in, essentially, that prediction tells us that whenever we have this collective human consciousness focus of millions of, of in, individual human beings, in this case of uh, Jews, focusing on this universal consciousness uh, principle reality, this brings about an increase in the rate of the universe's expansion for the whole subsequent year. And so, first of all, the, 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 spe the, the specific prediction is if we check uh, in, during this Rosh Hashanah, I believe it's September 16th, 17th. Um, so if we check during September 16th and 17th and onwards, as opposed to uh, the, the rate of the universe's expansion, as opposed to the rate of universe expansion, measured before September 16th and 17th, um, it can be, the details can be found in, in, uh, in the, the 90 or 100 articles that have been published. And there's an article now that's been published calling cosmologists, astronomers to, to validate this amazing new prediction of God's physics. Um, <clears throat> so the dates and the details can be found in my email, which I'm going to also give in this lecture. So anyway, the, 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 um, the prediction that has been validated already is that if, in fact, the rate of the universe's expansion increases every time, let's say, during the Jewish uh, Rosh Hashanah, when we have this collective human questions focus, so for the whole next year, Jewish year, we have an increase in the universe's expansion rate. And so over a period of time, we would expect that the rate of the acceleration of the universe would increase or grow over time. Um, and that cannot be explained, such a finding cannot be explained uh, by general relativity theory. In fact, one of the major unresolved problems in, in 21st century physics is this gap, this what I call the cosmological astronomical gap in the universe's accelerated rate of expansion. When we check uh, background radiation indices of the rate at which the universe was expanding uh, at early stage of the universe, um, and we check that, we compare that rate of acceleration to the rate of acceleration that is occurring right now, astronomical measurements, um, there is, a, there is a, a riddle, there is a big um, uh, a problem in 21st century physics, which cannot explain why, in fact, the rate of the universe's expansion right now is, is higher, significantly higher than the rate of the universe's expansion uh, in the beginning of the universe. And that can be explained by God's physics, new scientific paradigm, I'm going to just explain this briefly. According to God's physics, um, new scientific paradigm, the collective, collective human consciousness interacts and affects the uh, choice uh, of, of the, the, um, the, the rate of acceleration that this UCP creates for the universe. And um, so there's been a validation, empirical validation, through this phenomena, uh, phenomenon of a gap, cosmological astronomical gap, between the current higher rate of the universe's expansion and the uh, early stage universe's rate of acceleration, uh, expansion. And so we have already one uh, unique critical validation that supports God's physics as more valid than the corresponding predictions of relativity theory. Remember that be, be over and beyond the fact that dark matter, dark energy could not be found. Uh, and uh, that's very alarming uh, given 20 years of intensive experimentations. And uh, beyond the fact that um, God's physics uh, new paradigm uh, gives us uh, an, a new explanation of the universe's uh, um, increase in its rate of expansion. Um, but, the, but the very fact that we got a validation that uh, the, the rate of the universe's expansion increases over time, let's say from the beginning, early stage uh, universe to now, that implies or that supports God's physics prediction, but not general relativity theory, because general relativity theory, even uh, uh, over and beyond the fact that uh, dark matter, dark energy cannot be found, um, but there's a problem, a theoretical problem, because even if it did exist, and even if for some unexplained reason, those 95, assumed 95% of uh, dark matter, dark energy, uh, comprising 95% of all the mass in the universe, um, but um, so the problem is that 
uh, uh, first of all, that dark matter, dark energy cannot, it, it's very strange and unexplained how come it repulses and pushes the universe uh, to expand, whereas um, uh, we know in uh, Einstein's general relativity theory that mass and massive objects actually contract and uh, uh, attract uh, the um, uh, um, uh, objects uh, towards the more massive uh, object or the curvature of a space-time. So it's very odd, the behavior of dark matter, dark energy. It's purely hypothetical. And uh, over and beyond that, dark matter, dark energy could not explain why the rate of the universe expansion would increase over time. Um, so we have already one empirical validation. I've written about this extensively and lectured about, about this, etc. But we have already one uh, um, clear empirical validation of God's physics new scientific paradigm is more valid than the predictions, uh, corresponding predictions of uh, general relativity theory and quantum mechanics. The other phenomenon, the other uh, unique critical prediction that has been validated as supporting God's physics a new paradigm rather than the quantum mechanics, uh, which is part of the old material causal paradigm. Uh, the other phenomenon is the proton radius puzzle. I won't get into details, but essentially it's been shown that according to God's physics a new paradigm, which assumes that every pixel in the universe is being computed in terms of its four basic physical features of space, uh, energy, uh, mass, and time uh, as um, uh, um, object, as, uh, um, um, in the case of energy in space, it's frame, consistent, or inconsistent in the case of uh, uh, mass and time, it's object, consistent, or inconsistent computations. Um, and so we, we have a, a new model now of, of why the universe expands because essentially uh, the new God's physics paradigm is telling us that it's due to the collective human consciousness which we spoke about and on the microscopic level started mentioning the fact that uh, it, because this UCP computes for each ex uh, exhaustive spatial pixel the four basic physical features of space, energy, mass, and time um, Therefore, uh, the, the computational definition of mass, uh, according to this new God's physics paradigm, is the number of times that an object or a particle, subatomic element, has been presented consistently across frames. And the more uh, consistent presentations of that object across frames, the higher the mass is. This implies that there's going to be a, a much greater spatial consistency for massive objects because they're being presented the same manner as before. So the measurement would be uh, more accurate and the um, uh, diameter or the, uh, the size of the particle would become smaller when it's more massive because it's being presented more uh, in more frames consistently. So that's another, uh, the proton radius puzzle uh, essentially is a puzzle that quantum mechanics can't explain why when we have um, uh, hydrogen, simple hydrogen atom, and we have in the nuclei, nucleus, we have uh, the uh, proton and the neutron. And when we replace a hydrogen atom, standard hydrogen hat atom, replace the electron with the muon, which is also negatively charged, but it's um, um, about 100 times more massive, that muon particle sinks into the um, uh, proton. Um, and uh, in fact, in those cases, when we've replaced the electron with a muon, we find um, a decrease, about 100 times uh, decrease in the, uh, um, in the um, uh, proton's uh, size uh, uh, or radius. So we have the proton radius puzzle, which essentially is telling us that quantum mechanics can't explain why should this happen? Why should the the um, uh, radius of the um, uh, proton decrease when you replaced we replaced the uh, electron with the muon, but in fact, according to the new God's physics paradigm, this can be explained very uh, uh, easily because uh, really there's no material causal interactions as we spoke, but there is uh, um, you know, uh, a situation where when the UCP computes the mass of the, the proton and the muon, which is embedded as sunken into the proton, uh, because it's a more massive object, it would be presented more spatially consistent. It would decrease in its diameter or radius, and it would be presented more accurately, which is exactly the findings of the proton radius puzzle. Simply. And so 
we stand at a very exciting historic point because we realize that God's physics new scientific paradigm is more valid than the old material causal paradigm of both relativity theory and, and quantum mechanics. And it's been validated twice, not just once like in Eddington's validation of Einstein's uh, famous um, uh, uh, Mercury uh, perhelion prediction. It's been validated twice now. So we must accept, science must accept and is accepting, scientific community is accepting the new God's physics as the new satisfactory paradigm for 21st century theoretical physics. So that's all nice and fine. Now we have to understand um, what are the theoretical implications of this uh, startling uh, discovery. I think I, I would say two things. One, these are theoretical postulates that are part and parcel, parcel of this new God's physics uh, paradigm. And I think I'm going to say two things. One is regarding this uh, um, um, acausal computation uh, paradigm of God's physics characterizing God's physics paradigm. Essentially what we're saying, and I'm going to give an example, uh, uh, like an illustrative example. If we had, let's say, uh, um, a bottle of water and it was made of um, a glass and we had a, a hammer uh, in, a, in a film uh, scenario and you'd see the hammer hitting the glass jar or the glass bottle and uh, then the glass jar or bottle breaks down and the water are dispersed and, and uh, flush over the table. If I asked you what's causing the breakage of the, um, the bottle, you'd say it's simple. Well, I saw that's the, the hammer. But if I'd say, okay, let's, let's uh, slow down and then halt the progression of this uh, uh, film scenario, what would you see? We would see that there's no really causal uh, interaction or... or cause and effect relationship between the hammer and the glass jar. Because uh, in every uh, frame separately, we see both of them presented simultaneously. First frame, they're presented in a distance. Then the distance becomes smaller and smaller. And let's say at, at the third or fourth or tenth frame, we see the hammer um, touching the glass jar, but this, they're still presented simultaneously. And as we said, when two things are presented simultaneously, there cannot be any cause and effect between them. So the alternative explanation that God's physics, new scientific paradigm, gives us is that the director of the film has created the film in such a manner to give us the impression that there are scientific, uh, uh, that there is a, a scientific law of cause and effect of material interaction that caused the the glass to to break down and, and the water the, the bottle to uh, break down and the water to be dispersed over the table, but that's not the case. First of all, there cannot be cause and effect within each frame, as remember, they, they appear simultaneously. Second of all, between one frame and another, the whole universe, including the glass jar and the uh, hammer, they dissolve back into the UCP. And so there cannot be interaction between the frames, not within the frames, there cannot be really any cause and effect um, situation that is um, uh, assumed by the old model. And so what we're getting at is that we're getting to the point that we recognize God's physics as an acausal computational paradigm, essentially saying that uh, it's only the UCP that's creating those series of frames. There cannot be real cause and effect. There, there may be an appearance of certain laws that, uh, uh, for our own comfort, they seem to be uh, causal, they seem to be predictable. But in essence, and really deep, uh, what the, the actual truth is, there's only one reality, this is the universal uh, computational slash consciousness principle, uh, and it creates those series of frames, and it also gives us the impression, it builds the, the succession of the films, uh, film frames in such a manner that it would seem to us that there is law, predictability. Um, so we realize that according to the uh, new God's physics and uh, acausal computational paradigm, there cannot be cause and effect between uh, the hammer and the glass jar, or for that matter, between any two elements, two or more exhaustive spatial pixels or objects existing within the same frame or different frames. Um, the other postulate, um, which is profound, or two postulates, they're, they're actually connected, are called the computational invariance principle and the universal consciousness reality. And essentially they say that since only the, the UCP exists both in between the frames without the presence of the physical universe and also exists 
Um, um, so during the frames, it computes for every spatial pixel the four basic physical features. And uh, in between the frames, the whole universe dissolves back into the UCP, and the UCP exists singularly. And um, so, so this and the second uh, theoretical postulate, which is called the universal consciousness reality, is telling us something amazing in continuation with this computational invariance principle. It's telling us that since the only what I call computational invariant principle or element is that UCP or UCR, universal uh, computational principle, universal consciousness reality, that's the only real reality that exists uh, continuously, um, uh, um, um, uh, uniformly and um, uh, does not change um, over um, the, the, the succession of those film frames. Whereas the four physical features of any exhaustive spatial uh, pixel universe or object, those four basic physical features, they exist only when the, the UCP or UCR computes them within one of the frames. Um, and so we, we understand that really there's only one reality, that's universal conscious reality. And that one reality is uh, uh, creating the series of frames, and uh, really, it's it's um, uh, 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 it's based on the the um, uh, plan, so to speak, of this UCP to steer the universe from inanimate matter, animate plants, uh, animate um, uh, animals, and animate human beings, and then towards that perfected, ultimate perfected, dual state of humanity and of science and the world. That's the basic picture that we see today of the new God's physics paradigm. And it's dramatically different than the, the picture that portrayed by general relativity theory and quantum mechanics and uh, the old material causal paradigm. It's now a good idea to, to speak about some of the theoretical ramifications which are quite far-reaching of the new God's physics paradigm as opposed to the old material causal paradigm. So first of all, we have this a-causal computation paradigm which describes this new God's physics paradigm. That means that we have no cause and effect. We only have the director, the UCP, uh, so to speak, the director of the film or the UCP that creates a series of frames and actually has pre-planned and is operating and is steering the universe towards that perfected, ultimate perfected dual goal state. Um, and so uh, we start seeing that um, uh, this new acausal computational uh, paradigm negates some of our basic assumptions, the old assumptions that have been part of the old material causal uh, paradigm, such as, for example, the Big Bang model as part of general relativity theory. The new God's physics paradigm negates challenges and negates uh, this explanation uh, of Darwin um, um, uh, relating to, um, uh, um, so, so there's two elements. One is about Darwin and the other, uh, Darwin's evolutionary theory. The other one is about the Big Bang. We started with the Big Bang, and so I'll complete that uh, explanation. According to the New God's physics paradigm, the Big Bang model is challenged and negated because there cannot or there could not have been an interaction between, let's say, the initial nuclear event and its creation or causing of suns, galaxies, matter, energy, etc. Because in the first frame, second frame, trillionth frame, nth frame, whatever frame we're in or at, there cannot be any direct physical interaction between two objects. Uh, and all the objects dissolve back into the singularity of the UCP or UCR. So there cannot be any cause and effect. Therefore, the Big Bang model uh, is negated because the universe could not have been created by a Big Bang uh, nuclear event. Um, there could not have been interactions uh, implied in this uh, Big Bang assumed creation of the universe. There cannot be any, any interaction in the first frame, second frame, in between frames, everything dissolves back into the UCP. So that's one major, um, you know, change that the new uh, God's physics paradigm is negating um, uh, the, the Big Bang model. The other negation is about Darwin's natural selection principle, which I spoke about, uh, and and the fact that the fact that matter is the same. The old uh, material causal uh, paradigm of uh, Darwin's natural selection principle assumes that there is physical interactions that are creating or mobilizing, so to speak, the living uh, species to evolve. Um, and the famous example is about uh, an iguana uh, reptile uh, where Darwin uh, visited um, uh, when he was um, on his scientific expedition. 
and he, uh, lo and behold, he found out that on certain islands, those iguanas that had a, a longer neck, they could survive as opposed to those iguanas, standard iguanas, which just couldn't reach the leaves uh, or the leaves uh, on the trees in a barren uh, year. Uh, and that allowed them to survive. So there's two basic assumptions, material cause assumptions in Darwin's natural selection principle. I've written about this extensively. One assumption is that the, due to interaction, physical interaction between cosmic rays and genetic material of various species, various organisms, uh, those um, uh, organisms that had the contact or were affected by the cosmic radiation, uh, that caused them uh, to change their gen genetic uh, information, uh, genetic mutations. And that could have allowed, let's say, a longer neck to evolve when you put this in conjunction with the fact that the environment changes on only those that are compatible with this more harsh environment, challenging environment, will be able to live and, and uh, thrive and uh, bring other descendants. That natural selection principle evolutionary theory has been ch uh, challenged and negated by God's physics new scientific paradigm because, again, we cannot have these material causal interactions not at least as a cause for anything, and even th their interaction is problematic because there's no two or more exhaustive spatial pixels in any given frame that can interact between them. So we understand, excuse me, so we understand that uh, God's physics new paradigm challenges completely the way that we look at the world. The world has not been created by an initial Big Bang nuclear event. The world is not being, uh, or our planet is not being uh, the very species, uh, um, plants, animals, human beings, and even towards that perfected Beulah state, which I'll speak about for a second. Um, they, they, they could not have been created by any material causal interactions. They, they must be created by universal consciousness principle, steering the universe, having a plan, pre-planned pre -planned plan, of steering the universe, evolving it from inanimate matter, plants, animals, so animate plants, animals, human beings, and up to this uh, perfected Gula state. We stand at the historic point that now it's clear to the scientific community that uh, God's physics new paradigm is more valid than the old Newtonian, uh, the old uh, Einstein's relativity theory and, and quantum mechanics. Um, and so now we're getting to uh, the, the the part about um, uh, uh, realizing that the new God's physics paradigm is altering in a very profound manner our basic understanding of the universe. It's not been created by a Big Bang uh, nuclear event. It's been created, dissolved, recreated, and evolved on a second-to-second -second basis, many trillions of times per second. This universal consciousness principle is uh, creating a new this whole universe as a, a three-dimensional picture, and then it's dissolving it back into itself. Um, so some of the theoretical implications from that is that we start understanding, I, I just mentioned two more principles. One is the dynamic equilibrium moral principle, which essentially tells us that every time that a human being makes a moral choice, that human being triggers, so to speak, uh, in the universal consciousness uh, principle reality, triggers um, um, an equivalent, a selection of one of multiple possible uh, futures for that individual. I give an example in God's physics book, an illustrative example, that we had a CEO running for uh, an important meeting, and he was supposed to get a bonus during that meeting, a, a, a large financial bonus. Uh, but on his way, lo and behold, he sees in Ashgacha Pratit, he sees in personal providence, that there is a person lying on the ground that needs his attention. Assuming that he can handle this person and bring him um, you know, safely to the hospital, that's the moral choice that he's supposed to make. If, however, he makes the choice which uh, is uh, less fortunate, uh, uh, explaining why he uh, cannot cancel the meeting and he um, cannot help that uh, helpless person, uh, then the claim is that the universal co uh, consciousness principle reality would select for that CEO a future, one of multiple possible futures in which his uh, life may be a danger, God forbid, and he would need assistance for somebody else. So we start understanding that according to the New God's Physics Paradigm, uh, the world operates in a moral manner. The UCP or UCR 
is mm. is intimately connected and is uh, responsible for perfecting the world, for teaching us as human beings that we're not separate from each other, that I cannot inflict pain on another human being because he's just like me and I have to respect him. He's part, we're all part of the same universal conscious reality. Um, so, so that's a profound change because we understand the world does not operate as a quote-unquote jungle. Uh, there is uh, this universal conscious reality which really creates, sustains, dissolves, and evolves the whole universe. Um, and the second thing that I want to mention is the postulate about Geula. It's called the reverse time Geula goal hypothesis. Uh, and essentially it tells us that uh, the same manner, I give a metaphor, the same manner that King Solomon uh, before he set to build an immaculate temple uh, um, in, in um, uh, Jerusalem, he had to have an architect, a uh, um, um, uh, very skillful uh, or key uh, architect that would present to King Solomon a blueprint plan for the whole development of the universe from its initial inan inanimate matter uh, through animate plants, animals, human beings, and towards that ultimate goal of the universe, which is the uh, perfected Geula um, goal state of the universe. It's perfected morally, spiritually, even physically. Um, so that's the second or third assumption of God's physics new paradigm, which is so beautiful because it tells us the universe has not been created by um, a random uh, nuclear event, Big Bang event. Um, the nuclear, the, the universe is, is run by our moral decisions which perfect us uh, as individual human beings and perfects and prepares the whole universe towards the fulfillment of that ultimate Gula goal state. And I'll just add that really um, the, the new the acceptance of the, the scientific community of all the conditions and prerequisites of God's physics new paradigm um, changes our view of the world. The world is no longer just a physical material entity. It's being guided and being cared for by this universal conscious reality, which uh, um, itself is highly moral and uh, full of uh, uh, and and possesses all goodness, morality, peace, and harmony um, as its basic characteristics. So I want to finish this um, um, exciting talk by saying that God's physics new paradigm has been validated as the new empirical. Uh, uh, satisfactory new empirical scientific paradigm for 21st century physics, theoretical physics, um, as more valid than uh, general relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Uh, the new God's physics paradigm teaches us that there's only one reality, that's universal conscious reality, um, that appears as the universe during its computation of each consecutive uh, universal frame and remains solely without the physical universe in between frames. And this is perhaps uh, befitting to end this uh, talk with mentioning the Lubavitcher Rebbe, who uh, told us and taught us, uh, the Jewish people and more generally the whole of humanity, that we only have to open our eyes and see that this Geula state is already here. Um, so this happens by us studying God's physics and, and um, uh, understanding it more deeply so that our consciousness will change we understand that every moment things do not happen by chance every moment the uh, universal conscious reality is pushing us and the rest of uh, humanity and the universe towards that perfected dual state um, so it's a pleasure to record this uh, recording and um, I'll give also my own personal email which is Dr. Bentwich D-R-B-E-N-T-W-I-C-H at gmail.com I encourage cosmologists, astronomers to uh, be con in contact with me and carry out the necessary measurements that may validate um, this new God's physics paradigm even further and beyond the, act the, uh, the already uh, validated findings wherein the God's physics paradigm is, the, is a new paradigm for 21st century uh, theoretical physics. Thank you very much.